Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Rad Life. So one of the realities that we are living right now because of being jarred into a different dimension of operating uh, due to the coronavirus crisis is that we're all no longer wondering whether we can remotely work. The proof of concept is already with us. We have been able to remotely work. We've been able to adjust, to deliver on things, to continue, if we're fortunate enough to be working, to uh, doing our jobs remotely. But with that comes a whole bunch of different um, dynamics, realities, um, uh, corporate cultures, uh, internal cultures. And I wanted to bring somebody on today and have this conversation with him. It's somebody I really respect very highly and is a serial, serial entrepreneur. He is uh, a fellow uh, digital nomad operating uh, remotely um, in sort of in very unconventional ways, the way he has put his own companies together, successfully put them together, sold them, and is always on to a new venture. So with that, I will bring on Mr. Paul Heslop. And I want to f check in with him. He's a, f a friend of mine from the spa industry. I met him in the spa industry, but I really uh, admire him and hold him in high regards as a fellow creative. So let me bring Paul on board here and we can see what he is up to, if he is on with us or not. Ooh, Paul, are you there? I'm back. Yeah. You're I'm back. There. Yes. You're, you're never gone, man. You're always there. I'm always here. You're just, you're just, you're just doing something. I don't know. It's like it's, you're a moving target sometimes. Um, so I was saying, and not to embarrass you on camera, but I will, I will tell you to your face as well. I just said, you know, you're one of those people that I really appreciate, admire, and and really am always fascinated to see what you're up to next. And you've been, you've been, you've you've been somewhat of a non-conventionalist in how you basically set up companies, successfully sold the companies, moved on. You're always kind of trying to see what the new frontier is for you and then just kind of having fun at it, as you always say. Um, and people around you seem to be, you know, you seem to be infectious to people around you. They seem to have fun about it, or about, the, about whatever it is that you're doing too. So um, for those who don't know you, if you'll take a minute, well, I find some of these graphics I put together for you and yeah. actually just share a little background, Paul, I'd appreciate it. Uh, it's good to see you, my friend, but yeah, the camera and the mic is yours. Go ahead. Great to see you, man. Uh, happy to be on with you. I, I think that, you know, a little background on myself, uh, Paul Heslop, I've, uh, I live in Southern Utah, St. George, Utah. Uh, I've always had a very entrepreneurial background, started out as a, as a high school kid, knocking doors and mowing lawns. Um, look, I mean, I really started to learn entrepreneurial lessons and sales as a 16 year old going to get my own bread. Uh, you know, started with there in college, actually um, kind of back it up a little bit just to kind of give the, um, your listeners a little more background on how I got here. I actually, I worked for a brand when I was like 14, 15 years old. It was one of my only quote unquote normal jobs ever. And this brand was called Salt of the Earth. My neighbor started it in her garage. Yep. I was one of her first employees. I would ride my bike to her garage and make salt scrub in her garage. Now, um, fast forward and make a long story short. I, um, I thought it was an interesting company. She, at that time, she had kind of moved into a little warehouse, approached her. She wasn't really doing anything in the brand. I thought it was kind of a cool little company. And I asked her if she'd sell me the business. So 2008, I had about a year left in college, uh, graduated and started running this little company called Saudi Earth, bought it in a way. I ran that for 10 years. We expanded to 10 countries. Uh, we took a, a really a skincare brand from a garage to a global company at a, a, over a period of 10 years. I remember your 2008, by the way. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I start, I didn't know anything about spas. I didn't, I didn't know what a pedicure was before I bought this company. Uh, and we're selling pedicure products. And, but I, you know, I had a, I think going into a business and not having a box vision about how a company should look and knowing nothing about in this industry, it made me ask a lot of questions and question the status quo and question why isn't it be done this way. And it, I really carved out a lot of innovation um, uh, around the product line. And so that was, that was a decade of really my, of my life. I built a really amazing company culture within that. Our company culture was our number one recruitment tool, couple, uh, you know, 
really employee retainment tool and customer acquisition tool. And you, and you didn't, you didn't keep it to yourself, by the way, you actually shared that openly with people like, here's our corporate culture. Here's what it is. 100%. There was, but there was, I think it was, it was intelligent. You know, you, 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 you say it and I, I think I don't have it on the next graphic, but you say that, you know, your, cor your corporate culture could be your, your strongest marketing tool. Right. I mean, and you, 100%. and you use that, you live that. I saw it for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 you challenge you stand you challenge the status quo, and I wish there were a lot more people in that industry or in hospitality in general that did that, uh, because I think that was probably one of the biggest appeals that I had. Mm. That you, yeah. you you got your my attention is that you were challenging the status quo. You were you were caring to do that, but you also did it respectfully. I think that was also another thing that you know mm -hmm. you and I have not had really chance to, to discuss this. But one of the things I remember was that you did you challenge the status quo. But what was fascinating is everybody who was gatekeepers kind of embraced being challenged, which I found fascinating. Like usually people mm -hmm. are resistant to being pushed and, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, you just have that personality. You're like, you know, Hey, this is fun. Come on over here, play in yeah. my sandbox or my salt box. Right. And, and uh -huh. literally, literally that challenging of the status quo was very well received. Yeah, it, it was. And I think, you know, with the industry and a lot of industries that are quote unquote professional, and serious like you look at skincare for example mm -hmm. it can be stiff and stodgy and like no like we're this like european skincare brand or we're this really serious like you can be serious but at the same time people are fun people are human beings people do business with people and the more that you can let someone know who you are as an individual the real person you are um the more i think chance you have to actually transact and do business with them like if if you and i go to lunch 10 times you we know each other we know right. who each other are and we're like more likely to trust each other and so um we actually actively did a lot of things over a 10-year period to make it well known who we were as human beings and if that made us look at times like i know a lot of companies who say like i would never show the transparency because you don't want to look too small but i'm here to tell you right now i landed huge contracts with some of the biggest spa chains in the country and global distributors. And I didn't care if they knew I had five employees, but like we were just showing who we were as human beings. And we did that in a, in a right way. Yes. And we showed our professionalism and how more le legitimate we were. But I personally believe that like the more you are, the, the more you set yourself, you are, mm -hmm. um, you're going to find and attract like-minded brands, people. And, and that's who you want to do business with anyways, in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, your 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 sharing of your sort of behind the scenes, um, and I remember everything from frisbee tosses to <laughs> yeah. you know Jerry rigged skateboards for for, for 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 yeah. I mean, I remember. I think yeah. the thing that came across, Paul, honestly, was not so much that I was concerned that you were a small company. I think what came across was agility, and I mm -hmm. think that that's kind of a, an interesting way, flip side of the same coin, right? We, we talk about a big ocean liner moving very stodgily and making mm -hmm. maneuvers very slowly versus somebody that's a speedboat that can move a lot quicker. I think what came across and to your credit, you know, kudos to you because it was not non-strategic, I would bet, but what came across was that you are a very agile, creative, innovative company. That's not, that's not uh, afraid of, of risking going out on a tangent, you know, still mm -hmm. respectful of the industry, still, still driven by quality control, yep. uh, deliverability, you know, uh, we walk the talk, uh, but we may also skate the talk. We may also, you know, frisbee mm -hmm. toss the talk. We still walk the talk. Totally. Right. And it, and, and it came across. I mean, any, I think anybody who was, who was w w watching that through an unbiased filter, I think that's, that's what you got. And to your point, it, that is the internal corporate culture that became your strongest marketing. Uh, I mean, otherwise it was just a product. It was exactly it was just a product. It's a product that came in a box and I put it on a shelf and I sold it. But what was behind that product? What was the soul of the people engaged mm -hmm. in that product? And that's really what it was. So I know you took that company to, to very admirable heights and then you sold it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sold that 2018. I mean, it, in actually 2016, I had a, a, a company, purchase 80% of it. And I, I remain on the CEO for two years and then ran it and then sold the rest of my shares to them. And, and then I had about a year out of kind of skincare as far as like the, I had right. a non-compete. And so I just, we just started doing marketing for other companies. I mean, brands knew us by our mar video marketing and our marketing. We started doing that for other companies, me and my, my brother, Nick. Yep. Um, 
And then, you know, I had this kind of realization more, more so recently, like I had been doing a lot of this stuff as it was already, but I, I, I dug really deep and I was like, okay, what really made us special? What, when was I most alive in my career? You know, I asked myself all these questions and I thought to myself, look, you know, yes, we had a great product, which many of the listeners that you have right now have amazing products, they have amazing services, but a lot of people are not, they don't know how to market them or they don't know how to market themselves because I think people do business with people they always have and they always will. And the more that you can market, market yourself as a human being, like if you're a salesperson, you have to be able to communicate digitally and Mm -hmm. market your personality and show authenticity. Like you're going to have a higher chance of success. And so recently I sort of took all these ideas and experiences and I've had, I, I, I ran a side hustle with my wife. We sold that consumer products brand. Um, and so I've had uh, a multiple different companies, but I, I took a look at it. And I was like, okay, what has been the reason of our success? And there's many reasons. Um, but I, I thought to myself, look, building and documenting a remarkable company culture and sharing that with the world is like, honestly, a huge reason why I've been able to have opportunity in my life. Mm-hmm. And so this is what now I'm, I'm actually, this is what I like talk about a lot now because, and this is what I'm actually helping companies do is, uh, is, you know, finding their voice, finding their message, creating experiences, building that culture. And then like, how do we actually promote this and get others to see it? And um, I think companies that do that win, honestly, I think, especially now, cause you mentioned, right. People can see through the BS. Oh, the, 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 the radar, the radar is so highly tuned right now. <laughs> I mean, true. I mean, if you even, I mean, I had, I had people and I keep using this example. I feel bad for the guy because it's just such a blatant example. Right. I mean, I use it on, I God knows how many shows I've used this on. I can't, I will, he knows who he is if he's listened to any of these shows, but I don't want to, he's a yeah. friend, so I'm not going to out him, but my God, I mean, just the things that people could do right now while we're going through this coronavirus in terms of adjusting, maybe f- floundering a little bit, you know, trying something because they don't know what else to do. You could so easily damage your brand right now, mm. you know, to the, to the point where I actually <laughs> advocated to a couple of branding companies that they should start a new department called, you know, brand, brand repair. Like it's almost like credit, re- <laughs> like hey, credit repair. I right? like that. You're going to come out of this thing and you're going to basically do brand repair. Like you do credit repair because you could easily right now misstep. You could easily come across with a voice that is not empathetic, non-compassionate, that you're not, you're not seen as seeding, but actually in trying to harvest the same old way that you used to harvest with leads or, or sales. And that right now would be potentially fatal. I For mean, sure. Right? I think people have had to pivot big time. I think... Um, whether I mean, there's some companies that are extremely healthy right now, but for the most part, everybody else, there's a lot of people just sort of pivoting on what they want to do and really how they communicate, right? Because um, you're you're exactly right. Where this is, and this is the risk. This is where like big companies, um, you know, you talk about that big cruise ship for them to like turn their boat to the yeah. left side. It takes forever. And so, like when you're a smaller brand, if you can adopt this mentality, even if you're a brand that has a dozen employees or 40 employees. I personally think the more nimble and agile you can be with your marketing, this is such a fast changing world. Nimble, if, if, ja- nimble Jack, perhaps? Nimble Jack. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. That was our name of our media business that we ran, me and my brother, yeah. Nimble Jack Media. Um, but I just, I just think if you have the ability to do that and honestly, the ability just to communicate digitally, like it's, well, well, it's, 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 it's not an option anymore. I mean, it's, yeah it's a mandatory tool that you have to have in your toolkit. There's just no way that you're not, I mean, if anything has, has even been accelerated in the last yep. 60 days, because I mean, you know, you had maybe what, what 1% of the population using zoom. Now you got 30% of the population using zoom. I <laughs> exactly. mean, everybody's on camera. You were uncomfortable being on camera. Now you're beyond comfortable being on camera for everything from happy hours to board <laughs> meetings. I mean, somebody told me that their zoom was their basically their break room and their boardroom. Right. Ooh. And, the, and, yeah. And the browser, their browser was their new cubicle and, and Zoom was their break room in the, you know, so uh-huh. there you go. I mean, I'm, I'm using that all day long. It's perfect. It, it's so. true. Like it, it really is like your ability to market digitally communicate right now is, is more important than ever. Um, and but so again, but again, to what you were saying, Paul, mm-hmm. and what, what you were making reference on when I was, when I was kind of like being flippant and said to you before we got on there is yes. I mean, the people, people need to be, authentic they need to be uh, candid 
you know, and we say that like it's very easy to achieve, but that requires a certain amount of humility, a certain amount of vulnerability, a certain amount of comfort in your own voice, your inner, you know, voice, and to be comfortable enough for it to be coming across as natural. That isn't mm-hmm. something that just you flip on a switch. I mean, you either have done some serious self-reflection, you're, <laughs> you've worked on yourself along the way, and that's as an individual, let alone as a company, right? Yeah. But, but, but one thing that came out of a me- uh, in, an interview I just did today, and it made me realize the following, because we were talking about that ocean liner and the speedboat, and you know, one moves faster than the other, and so it's almost like an old go-to uh, example that we use, okay? But the, the truth of the matter, if anything has also been proven to us in the last 30 to 60 days, or by the time we're through this, mm-hmm. is we spent God knows how many hours arguing for our own limitations and being able to be m- nimble, to use your, a term, and, mm-hmm. and to be agile and to be quick in making switches and de- deciding things, right? Mm-hmm. And here we are, within two weeks, everything pivoted to, to digital communication. Everything pivoted to uh, deliveries restaurants are delivering alcohol. I mean, you know, it's like mm-hmm. everything, everything within, within, within three weeks. Yep. So for all, for all our constraints that are self-imposed, I believe for all our arguing that we have to basically continue to play by the same playbook. Okay. Yep. We just proved to ourselves if we're willing to accept it, that if we really wanted to do it, you could do it like that. Exactly. It, it really is a decision and kind of going back to your thoughts about kind of this idea of authenticity, transparency. It's like, how do, how do you do this? Like how, because now that we're all having to communicate digitally more, we're having to like look down the barrel of a lens and and talk on camera where not everybody's going to be super pumped about that or comfortable with it. Like for myself, I was always, I mean, first of all, like credit my parents that we, they had eight kids, they have eight kids, uh, one girl, seven boys. I'm kind of right in the middle and whatever they, I mean, they, my siblings are amazing people. My parents are like the best people I know. And so I think for myself, it was really instilled in me at a young age. Like you have to be extremely confident when you sell, like I, you have to be, you, you have to brag when you need to brag. But at right. the same time, I mean, I remember one keynote uh, speech I did where I was telling about myself and I was, cause they're like, I wanted to like set the stage. Okay. Like this is what I've accomplished, but I, I had a hard time sitting up there bragging. So I kind of, I showed this picture of kind of, it was like a 10 year period. I was like, okay, this is what the life was like 10 years ago. Now this is what it is today. I did a 10 year comparison. And one of those 10 year comparisons was, um, this is a couple of years ago. I showed, this is what my car was. You guys, this is after I kind of bragged about my accomplishments and the, and the, and somebody who introduced me gave my accolades or whatever. And so this was early on in my speech. And I was like, okay, this is my t- car 10 years ago, guys. And it was like a 2002 Honda Civic. I was like, you guys want to see my car today? Are you guys ready? And I, this is like on the stage, right? And I showed a picture of my car and it was a 2002 Honda Civic. It was, this was in uh, 2018, right? And so I wasn't afraid to like, people are afraid to like show, like I'm, look, I, I'm not afraid to show I have a Honda Civic. Like I have all these other things, right. but this is what I drive right now and I don't care. I, I do not care. And, and so when you, when you show, like you need to show confidence, you need to show you're legitimate, but you need to show like that you have accolades or whatever, but then don't be afraid to, um, you know, say like, get, get vulnerable and kind of say like, look, I'm just like you guys, whatever. Right. And so, well, and, and, and you're not doing it to, to try to basically have a, a go-to, you know, sound bite of saying, I'm just like you, this is no. who you are. And that, exactly. and, and, and that, but that's, and that's, that's the, that's what I mean when, when I say that, you know, people's bullshit may, meter or radar right now is on a heightened state because Mm -hmm. you could you could try to pull that off as a pretend and you might be able to for a short period of time but i think it's an unsustainable position so you know as everybody says you know there's only one unique you so why don't you amplify that but in order to get to the point where you actually are willing to let that person out or let that 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 personality Mm -hmm. out good bad ugly side of it the whole nine yards you have to do a little work for yourself. I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 in order for it to be sustainable, mm-hmm. you got to be comfortable in your own skin. You got to be really comfortable in your own skin. If you can't, then you cannot really make that the wrapper around your business, what you stand for, what, you know, sort of the, the culture yep. that you support. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's a very fascinating thing. And you and, I, we, you and I took it even further when we were talking earlier about the fact that right now, 
when it comes to corporate culture, you also don't have a traditional company structure that's probably going to mm-hmm. materialize out of this. Right. I mean, it's people are trying to figure out how do they, I mean, I mean, I think some companies were really good at promoting and showing their culture and, um, but now you're like, okay, how do I even have a company culture? My entire team spread across the country. I have no one inside. And, and this is going to like be temporary for some people. Some people, this is going to last forever. Like, I mean, there's companies are going to be like, all right, we're doing remote from now on. Yeah. I think it actually just op- opens up an opportunity to do even more um, where some are not paying rent anymore. Like it gives you more opportunities to create less, experiences. Less, less overhead. You're providing more opportunity. Yeah. For, yeah. Well, and I even think like the companies, I mean, my whole thesis is create and document a remarkable company culture. So how do you create culture when it's remote? And then how do you, how do you document this in a video series? If you have three people and you're all in different, your home offices, how possibly are you going to pull that off? Well, there's an amazing, like storytelling is storytelling. It, it, it's the same. It doesn't matter if you're in a gorgeous office that costs you $10,000 a month in rent, or if you're in a one bedroom apartment where you have a zoom webcam like i think storytelling is storytelling and if you can figure out the narrative the message you're trying to promote and communicate to the world and that really important message and right for me if i'm if i'm like a a a company right now and i have i want to create a better remote culture i'm thinking to myself okay if i'm leading this culture i'm thinking how do i surprise and delight my staff or my people that i'm working with right how do you surprise it? Well, you, first of all, you have to know what the heck they care about. Like, do you literally know, like when, when I work with clients, I have, I call this survey, the funnest survey that I will fear, like fill out. And it's literally, what's your favorite band? What's your favorite artist? What's your favorite place to visit? Favorite treat, restaurant, dessert. And so when I want to, like, I just have them fill that out to start. And then when I want to surprise them or when they do something special or want, like I knew this, I knew everything about my employees in that way. So if I wanted to treat them to some Dave Matthews tickets or some Utah jazz tickets or give them a gift card to their favorite dessert place, or just bring it on a Friday. Like I bring in their favorite dessert. Yeah. Like that costs me nothing. We can do this in remote cultures. We need to understand what people, customers, prospects, employees actually care about. We need to create micro experiences for them. That's number one. Number two, I believe that every person out there can create a video series about even if they're their culture is remote. I believe they can create a video series that's interesting to watch for their prospects. Yeah. I believe well, this. Well, and, and, and that requires you to actually take the time and interest, genuine interest in finding out, right? I mean, that's the other thing too. Like, like you really need to, if you're going to go down this path, you can't just, you know, run algorithms on, uh, you know, your employees. You actually oh, have yeah. to, you have to engage. You literally have to engage uh-huh. and care enough to, to engage and find out you can't just you can't pretend because that's again surface that's to- not gonna, totally yeah you need to listen to them people share on social right like if I, so let me give you an example um and this i i i, I very co- closely correlate experiences to culture so um we had a dis- distributor with, when i was running salt of the earth we had distributors all over the world we had one in mexico there was a guy and there was a girl who were leading this team of distributors um, it's literally about listening. Um, this, this is like three, four years ago, but the girl, she, we were in Mexico doing some sales stuff with them. She had, my wife had this like really cool, like kind of purse bag backpack. She commented on it like every time she saw her like multiple times, right? That's in my brain that she cares about that. The guy, when we were out to restaurants, <laughs> it was kind of funny. Like every time he had like a charger with him, he had like a bad battery in his phone, but he was always handing the, the waiter or whatever, like his charger. He's like, can you plug this every, everywhere? He was just charging his phone. So later when uh, they came to the States, they came to Utah to do a visit with us and to do some training. When they got to their room on their, on her pillow, I had a handwritten note and I had that bag it cost me $130. I had that bag sitting on her pillow and I said, thanks for all, everything. And the guy, I, get, I got him a freaking Portable charger for heaven's sakes. It cost me 40 bucks yeah. with a handwritten note and says, you know, hope you don't run out of batteries here in Utah. And so like I listen, you pay, it's all about paying attention. It's about surprise and delight. Now, if I would have done that on Christmas, that doesn't mean as much as a random time. If I would have done that during a holiday that they care about, it doesn't mean as much. And so I kind of call this principle Valentine's in August. 
If I'm going to tr- um, try to d- deepen a relationship with someone, um, uh, Valentine's in August, say my wife, for example, if I bring home a dozen roses on Valentine's day, uh, wow, that's creative, Paul. Good job. Mm-hmm. Right. If I bring my wife a dozen roses on August 10th, that's a random Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Like the appreciation level that the thought that goes into that is way beyond the brownie points that goes into that is so much further. It's literally about timing and it's about listening. And it's about actually just giving a crap about the people Mm -hmm. that we want to interact with, whether it be our coworkers, boss, employee, prospect, customer, Mm -hmm. it doesn't cost that much money either. Mm -hmm. It's about being smart and listening to what they care about. Just pay attention. You know, it came full circle. This, this story with, the, um, with my distributor, Alejandra, this was, I think, two months ago on Instagram stories. She shared a picture of the bag and she, she was like videoing it. And she's like, Paul, and she tagged me. Look at this bag. It's been over the world. It's taken three years. And she tagged me. She's like, I need a new bag for 2020, right? <laughs> so I, it's funny. I shared it and I tagged the company. An ex-employee of mine happened to be working at that company. And she DMs me. She's like, send me your address. I'm sending her a new bag for free. <laughs> it's like, what? So, I mean, that, that kind of was a, a story, but like there's so many little mini examples like that. It, it can cost 30 cents. It can cost $5. It's literally right. about listening to who you care about and creating experiences. This is, the, this is the, the first part, one of the first parts of creating a better culture. Whether you're in an office or in, you just like pay attention to people that you want to deepen your relationship and your culture with. Well, and, and you, you, I just want, I want, I want to wrap this up with just going there on this one topic, which again is sort of indicative byproduct probably of what we're going through right now overall. And again, this isn't an isolated experience. Speaking of experiences that we are going through, it is a global phenomena. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't care what, what gated community or what shack you're living in, you are basically being touched by this one degree or another globally. So, um, I mean, I, uh, perfect example is a gentleman that we both know, uh, Trent M- uh, Mundi, who's out in, uh, in Malaysia. And yeah. he basically was, I mean, you know, they operate, he operates all the, ho- all the spas that are not cruise ship based for Steiner. And so it's like about 45 project, uh, properties. Uh, they would normally be able to weather a storm if it was impacting one country, but not another. Right. right, right. Nothing was spared this time around. He had a he had a period of forty eight hours where they generated two hundred dollars total from all property. Wow. Right, and so this is not this is not a you know a, a happenstance. This is a serious uh, paradigm shift in mm-hmm. in a way that's global. But so with that being said, and you touched on it a little bit, you know, coming out of this, companies may decide, you know, I don't think we're going to go back to having everybody housed in this large warehouse environment or. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we might want to basically cut that down for a number of reasons, uh, better quality of life, maybe more efficiency, maybe, you know, people mm-hmm. are actually uh, allowed to maybe increase their skill sets by providing them with additional opportunities for education, for example, versus paying it in rent, yep. you know, for, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I really care. I want you to enhance your abilities. I don't want to pay it in rent. I would rather give it to you in credits towards education. But as a result of that, we may actually be looking at a more remotely placed workforce yep. with people that are now basically not, don't, not having the actual physical team environments that they are accustomed to. And you and I, I mean, we shared, I shared with you blatantly that yeah. you know, when I went out on my own in 2003, that was one of the hardest things for me to do, especially in a, create, in a creative environment and industry that I did not have the ability to walk around and basically draw on that creative energy from uh, the people that I was basically were colleagues and peers. And so here you are in an, in a isolated, connected, but yep. isolated physically environment. And I think this concept of, of uh, corporate culture in its new meaning is even more critical. Yep. And you know, who leaves that charge? Is it the individual who leaves that charge? Is it the company that basically, you know, leads that charge? Because we are going to be looking for different support systems yep. in different ways. Yeah. I mean, you, you hit it right on the head like this. It's the, the world's changed. Um, and how is, is it the individual? Is it the employee? Is it the come from the top down? I mean, anytime you can come from the top down, that's better, but it doesn't mean like if you're sitting there and you have a boss that's not promoting this awesome culture, remote culture, you can't do it yourself. You know, one of the things that I think about that I think would be kind of interesting. I, I think 
honestly a way to, I, I go back to this video concept because I think when we built uh, my culture at Salt of the Earth that really people, they knew us by our culture. Mm -hmm. We did it through video. We, we created skits and lip syncs and stupid stuff like that. That was fun and that our employees look forward to. But I, I, I remember your little, your little bread van. Remember yeah, your, yeah. Do you remember your little bread yeah, van? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> we, had all, we had everything under the sun that we did yeah. to, to just to show, again, personality and show, and it, it's, it actually just comes down to attention. When we want the attention of prospects, customers, uh, and potential hires, you need to capture their attention. So what's going to be, I think it's an amazing opportunity, right? Say, let's just take an example, right? Let's get specific here. Say you have a team of four people and your four people are uh, spread all over the place. I honestly think you could, there's so many ways to create video content around remote culture. Like one example could be, and it doesn't have to be the same format every single time, but you create a script with your coworkers with your partners and you um, have this, you have a competition, it's lunchtime, right? And it, it misses every, maybe every Thursday you do this and you have this uh, lunch off, right? Company name lunch off. And it's like about your homemade lunch in your kitchen and you create this narrative and then one person, maybe your marketer or maybe you take this on uh, and maybe you have more time right now with your, with the um, COVID-19 stuff, but yeah you create a narrative where you say, okay, like we're doing a competition and we're going to let the audience, we're going to let our customers vote on who had the, who had the best lunch. Um, right. It could be a, a little story about it's a one page script, 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. You start it. Uh, Jill in Houston does the second paragraph. Johnny in this area does the third and they're all doing it from different States yeah. and they're telling this cool story as a company. And what happens is you see this connection of like Johnny, Jill, and Jack on the same video. All of a sudden, is, is like I think I think cultures are amazing when people want to join them, right? So if I'm um, looking at joining a sales team and I see these guys are collaborating, they're all over the country, and they're like doing a lunch off, they're doing a bake off, they're they're like talking about their brand, they're educating about this product. Like I think like it's an amazing time to create. How, how do I get to be product. part of this? Right? How do I get to be part of this? Right? What, totally. Yeah. It's literally about creating. Um, energy that people want to be a part of and if that the beautiful part about creating this kind of energy is you attract like-minded people like you're going to attract people who are like i want that in a job i want mm -hmm. that kind of energy in a job mm -hmm. even if it's like i'm still stuck in my one bedroom apartment mm -hmm. right but and, and you can make the content like it's not just the story, right? There's a, there's a lot of ways you can make content better, like enhance it. It's not about professionalism. Like some of the best content out there that we've ever produced ever is on our cell phone. You don't need this crazy equipment. You need to like focus on, okay, like how do we communicate? And then, right. And all of a sudden this begins, like, this is about attention. This is a, at the end of the day, it's also about sales. And so all of a sudden when they get an email from you, if you're, if you're selling and your prospect or your customer gets an email, who won the lunch off and then they watch the episode every week all of a sudden they know who johnny jill and jack are mm -hmm. and they you can connect with people like no other through video content so like i think i think video is a huge part of that culture especially now you know paul if for, and for those that are listening to you going nah that doesn't work i'll just say i'll just say this how many of those same people saying now nah, actually sat down and watched Jeopardy one week after one day after the other with different people basically competing or watched like Dancing with the Stars and cheered on one particular person versus another? There's that best that that personal mm -hmm. connect that starts to happen. Right. Or, yeah. or watch Survivor because of the cultural dynamics of how those teams, tribal basically communication starts to happen and relationships have to happen. Yeah, we are very much in, at, at, I think, a very exciting time. I understand the first uh, part of this was hunker down, get all the toilet paper that you can, you know, all the uh -huh. paper towels that you can. Um, you know, but I think a reality probably kicked in when you try to take them all back to Costco and they wouldn't take them back. At that point, I think maybe <laughs> exactly. you just realized, wait a minute, there's more going on here. <laughs> exactly. But uh, we, we, I think, have an opportunity to challenge the status quo. Mm -hmm. um, not from necessarily a position of, 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 of necessity, but from a position of an opportunity. And I, and I think if, you can get, if we can get ourselves, I mean, some of us, I think, are more DNA prone to basically having our head in that space. 
Yep. But I think it's something that everybody and anybody out there can do it. And if you can't do it yourself to get you started, then you need to talk, get a hold of Paul. Here's the website on the behind me, paulhaslove.com, right? Or, right? or people like that that will basically right. coach you through it because the one thing you don't want to, I think, spend money on is scant content anymore. No. I don't, I, I don't no. think that's, it's, that's, that's just the waste. That's just you throwing money down the toilet, you know, and, and rather than trying to basically fabricate a false fake persona mm -hmm. or, you know, some sort of wrapper, you know, just actually dive, dive deep and find that unique value proposition that constitutes your, your own DNA and maybe amplify it with the help of somebody who, you know, lives and breathes this thing. You got a gentleman yeah. right across, across from me right here that does this. Uh, and enjoys it. So it's, it's, it, it, it can be a very fun process. It can, but, but again, it requires, mm -hmm. I think that, that, that level of humility and vulnerability. Yep. Exactly. That for me is going to be the, the most interesting thing to see actually, Paul, to see in a, in a, in a, in an environment, in a society, regardless of industry, where there's comfort in the holding on to what I know, what yep. is safe, what is the edge of the pool. Okay, versus the scariness of being vulnerable and exposed and having humility and, ex and vulnerability mm -hmm. to other people around me. Am I going to be able to rise to that occasion and actually deliver on yeah. that <laughs> as my growth next growth phase or not? And those who will will succeed yep. probably in ways that are not even imaginable today. And those who won't, unfortunately, I think will go down the path of the dinosaurs. They're just going to ex go extinct. Yes. And honestly, like I think people get hung up because they don't want to look stupid. They don't want to look, Ill they don't, they want to look legitimate. They want to look professional. They want to look bigger than they are, which is yeah. totally, that's branding, right? Branding yeah. is like, but I, I think you need that level of profession. Like, so for example, um, when you're thinking about this and you're like, okay, I want to promote my business. I want to promote my culture. I want to promote myself as a human being. How do I pull this off? Well, but I, you want to look legitimate. Sometimes it does take taking a sliver. I'm talking about five seconds of the intro of your video and making, putting, going, hire a pro to do that, right? But like making it so clean and yeah. so direct about what you do as a business. Like we did a, a video show called The Creative Juice Show. It's a business show to get your creative juices flowing. Yeah. That's the name of my podcast. Yeah. And um, so, but in the, in, the, in the 10 seconds, we wanted a show because we were videographers, photographers. We were like, okay. How do we show how legit we are? Well, let's make the coolest intro we could possibly do. Cause we didn't want to be like, um, have this unprofessional footage cause we're right. videographers. So right. we made that little thing so people could taste it. And then half of our content is cell phone connecting a cheap hundred dollar mic inside our cell phone, selfie video style, doing the right cuts, songs and edits. And, um, so I think there's ways to actually look legit, but then also look really vulnerable and, sh and not be afraid to show behind the scenes, the companies, I think, um, even so right now, like if I'm a company that's completely changed, that I have to change my business model. I have to change my culture. I'm no longer in a cool office with other people show behind the scenes of how your document, actually how your company is coming out of this. And this is our video series about. Uh, us coming out of this economic, this COVID-19 crisis. I it's saw, I saw something to that effect yesterday and I didn't get, you know, didn't really delve into it too much, but it almost looked to me like somebody was in the throes of expanding their physical location just prior to the COVID-19 hitting. Mm -hmm. And now they basically were standing in the middle of this space that was not completed and talking mm -hmm. about how they have abandoned that direction in the interest of something else that was better for their culture. And it was interesting mm -hmm. because they, they, were, they were actually admitting that they had made a mistake. Mm -hmm. But in the admitting of having made this mistake, they also were sharing that we've seen the, 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 the better path. And in doing so, basically showed that they were forward thinking, not stuck in the mud, and yet they're, sitting, you're, they're physically standing in a place that wow. they have expended money on and they're not going to complete. They're actually going to walk away from it because this is not who we are right now. We've learned wow. through this thing. Yeah, to your point, I think that is that so, sort of the, the underbelly, the behind the scenes mm -hmm. that sometimes really intrigues people. And then so then when you have that polished outcome in a week or two or a month or two, 
yeah. they, they also realize where you came from. And I think that's, that's the part of the journey that most people like, it's like even in interior design, you know, you, you flip through a magazine and all you see is finished product. And it's always fascinated me that there's no people in the, in the, in the spaces. Like it, totally. Right. Well, like, if it's experiential, why, why are you taking pictures of this beautiful restaurant that has nobody sitting there basically salivating at the food? I don't understand that. Right. That, yeah, that exactly. doesn't make me want to go in there. <laughs> makes me want to buy the furniture. Maybe if I'm in the profession, yeah. but that's it. So, yeah, it's, 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 it, it is an interesting time. Um, I, I, I can't wait to see how much opportunity this actually opens up for you because I think you are perfectly placed right now. For well, this. I appreciate that. I think I, you know, it, it, it was, it really was crazy interesting time for me because I literally launched my website. Um, I think it was like three days after like, the yeah. meltdown like it was like the nba got canceled yeah. all the tournaments got canceled yeah. and i've been working on this for for months i i've been like i i changed i literally tweaked about seven words on my website yeah <laughs> everything else was the exact same and so i do think to your point you talk about kind of document versus creating yeah. if you don't know what to do like you want to show behind the scenes and you want to try to make that as interesting as possible there's lots of ways to make it interesting um, but you want to like, if you don't have something that's this pretty bow with a ribbon on it right now, this perfect company show the process of being it, it being built. Like I'm doing that. I'm showing like, okay, yeah, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm showing my process. Yeah. Um, and, and if look, if you never, if, if I could give one piece of advice right now, if somebody wanting to promote their culture, promote their business, even if you don't shoot, like edit that footage today, just document, just take out a camera, take out your phone and video record where you were before and after. I have some really cool, and I wish I would have documented 10 years ago because um, I, with my business, I had this one shot of my daughter. She's like a two month old, like mixing lotion. I'm kind of like holding her hand and mixing lotion on the, on the, this table. And then when I sold my company in my like exit video, I have this like video of me and my daughter and she's 10 yeah. and she's like mixing lo the same shot, right? simply document because you don't know like where you're going to be in five years, 10 years, two years. And if you, and if that business closes down, you never do anything with it. You documented your process along. If you are successful with it, the amount, the footage that you have of your first starting days, yeah, it's absolute gold. And so document versus create hundred percent. I think well, it's, 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 you know, that old adage, but if you, if a life, a life worth living is a life worth journaling about, or, or, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's sort of very similar to that, except now you just get to do it digitally and everybody around's got one of these, right? So it's hundred percent. It's not really difficult to do. Um, Paul, I appreciate you being on my friend. I really do. Um, thanks for taking the time. I'm sure before this is over, we'll have another conversation because it's moving so fast that, you know, for like you, people like you and me, I think we're just getting kind of excited, like, ooh, ooh, what's tomorrow going to bring kind of thing, right? Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rod. I, it's a pleasure to be on. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to seeing what you're doing and um, appreciate the time as well. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk off offline. I I'll fill you in on what's going on because I think you know we you kind of I kind of talked to you a little bit about it a couple of months ago, and then mm -hmm. kind of this this provided me an opportunity to kind of pivot because I wasn't going to try to sell any expensive furniture to anybody right now. I thought that was kind of a little insensitive on my part. Right. Kind of built, you know, <laughs> hey, how about that room edition? Let's get you that room edition. Yeah, exactly. Right. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, we you and I will talk. I've been cool. thinking about that, so I appreciate you jumping on. Good yeah. luck with the new venture, man. I uh, like I said. I'm always watching. So you always keep it interesting. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Paul. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.